The Super Duke platform is strikingly unique in that it wasn't constrained by conventional design rules. While most naked and hyper-naked bikes typically stem from technologies tailored for track-focused sport bikes, the Super Duke embraces its rebel spirit. It's not merely a sport bike stripped of its fairings, it's purposefully crafted to be a troublemaker, concealing its true nature with impressive performance. In KTM's lineup, where practicality and business acumen often dominate, the Super Duke stands out as the embodiment of sheer enjoyment. Yet, one wonders, can there be such a thing as too much enjoyment? KTM may chuckle at the notion but acknowledges the importance of rideability for a street bike. The 2024 1390 Super Duke, our Evo confronts this concern while remaining faithful to KTM's ethos of more is more. It represents a significant evolution from its predecessor, the 1290, incorporating advancements to provide a more refined riding experience. The evolution of the 1390 begins with its 1,350 cubic centimeters V-twin engine, boasting a slightly larger bore than the 1290, resulting in increased displacement. KTM boasts figures of 190 horsepower at 10,000 RPM and 107 pound FT of torque at 8,000 RPM, a substantial improvement over the 1290's 177 horsepower and 103 pound FT of torque. For perspective, our test on the 2023 1290 Super Duke, our Evo showed 157 horsepower and 92.8 pound FT of torque at the rear wheel, making it less powerful than competitors like the Ducati Street Fighter V4 SP2 and BMW M1000 are in terms of horsepower, but outperforming them in torque. According to KTM development rider Jeremy McWilliams, who provided insight into the bike's characteristics, it's the torque that truly enhances the riding experience. Horsepower is secondary. It's the mid-range delivery that truly defines the thrill of riding, McWilliams explains. However, the 1390 boasts an additional feature, electronically actuated camshift technology, which adjusts intake valve timing, duration, and lift, between 5,750 and 6,000 RPM. Similar to BMW's approach across different engine platforms, this system comprises electronic actuators atop each cylinder, pins, and a sliding sleeve on the intake cam. By dropping the pin, a switching gate on the sliding piece engages different cam profiles. KTM's variable valve timing technology not only ensures strong low RPM torque and throttle response, but also preserves top end performance. It enables KTM to meet stringent 5 Euro plus emission standards without compromising the quintessential Duke personality. Further power manipulation is achieved through shorter, larger diameter throttle bodies, 60 mm compared to 56 mm on the 1290 Super Duke R, and repositioned injectors. Although the airbox is shorter to accommodate the 1390's larger tank, it has increased volume. Additionally, a redesigned ram air system facilitates more direct airflow. Service intervals and valve clearance checks are extended to 60,000 kilometers, approximately 37,000 miles, a significant increase from the previous generation Super Duke's 30,000 kilometers, 18, 641 miles. Recommendation While the chassis remains unchanged from 2023, minor adjustments have been made to accommodate the reshaped airbox. When questioned about the decision not to alter the chassis, McWilliams explained that necessary changes were implemented during the previous Super Duke update. Back in 2016-2017, the bike performed exceptionally well on the street, forgiving, nimble, and agile, McWilliams noted. However, when we tested it on the track with super sticky tires, we noticed some chassis behaviors. As motor technology progressed, we recognized the need to stiffen the chassis for improved performance. Before the 2020 launch, KTM conducted tests with a modified chassis, resulting in McWilliams shaving off a full second at the track. Upon receiving this feedback, the factory analyzed the data, pinpointed the improvements needed, and developed the current chassis, McWilliams explains. Simultaneously, we installed a swing arm that's 30% stiffer, complementing the torque output perfectly. Thus, we felt no need to alter the chassis setup for this bike. In terms of suspension, KTM has adopted WP's latest generation semi-active technology, SAT, featuring electronic rear spring preload and five standard damping modes, auto, comfort, rain, street, and sport. Opting for KTM's Suspension Pro package grants access to customizable track and pro suspension modes, along with three preload auto-leveling settings, low, standard, and high, 
and an anti-dive function that stabilizes the front end during braking. Additionally, the factory start feature lowers the rear of the bike when launch control is engaged, despite the bike's primary focus on street riding. The bike boasts an extensive rider aid package, with preset rain, street, and sport modes as standard. With the optional tech pack, performance and track modes become available, allowing customization of traction control, engine brake control, and wheelie control. The anti-wheelie mode for 2024 offers five levels of adjustment, plus the option to turn it off completely. Information, including electronic settings, is displayed on a 5-inch TFT screen with a clear layout and user-friendly interface. However, it's regrettable that the switch gear from KTM's new 990 Duke hasn't been carried over, considering the positive feedback received for its button layout. There are indeed some resemblances to the 990, particularly the standout feature of the new adaptive LED headlight, which not only weighs 1.5 pounds less than its predecessor but also delivers a more evenly dispersed light beam. Additionally, tank spoilers and winglets not only enhance the bike's aesthetics but also reportedly contribute to increased downforce, according to KTM. While this might not be a significant concern for casual street riders, they'll appreciate the fact that the fuel tank is approximately 0.4 gallons larger. In terms of size, the 1390 surpasses the 990 Duke and offers a more spacious cockpit, a welcome feature for riders over 6 feet tall. Despite its larger stature, it remains remarkably comfortable, with elements suggesting both its aggressive nature, such as the low, narrow handlebar, and its relaxed demeanor, such as the wide, flat seat. Our test ride took us to the Almeria circuit in southern Spain, where we could fully exploit its more aggressive side. Despite its street-focused design, the Super Duke are still exudes a distinctly sporty aura, especially when stripped of its mirrors and prepared for track action. While it may have fewer fairings and more street-oriented ergonomics, it would be a mistake to dismiss this bike as merely a commuter. The engine perfectly complements this spirited character, offering unparalleled excitement with every twist of the throttle. Unlike bikes focused on high revving velocity down the straightaway, the 1390 thrills riders with its fierce acceleration out of corners. Although the Ducati and BMW may excel in top end performance, the 1390's power delivery is unmatched. During testing, the prototype 1390, disguised as a 1290, surprised even seasoned riders on Panagales. McWilliams recalls the initial challenges in refining the torque delivery as the valve timing changed. When the camshift engaged, it felt like a whole new level of power, he explains. It was reminiscent of riding a 500 cubic centimeters MotoGP bike from the two-stroke era, with that sudden surge of torque. While I enjoyed it immensely, I realized we needed to tame it a bit. We had to make the transition less aggressive when the camshaft kicked in. In its perfected state, the camshift function operates so seamlessly that, particularly on the track, the transition is virtually imperceptible both in terms of feel and sound. All that registers is the effortless throttle response and the surge of torque as you accelerate through the mid-range. The sensation of astonishment and exhilaration persists 